Yo, Elliot, I hope your wife and your kids are doing well. Thank you for all that you do for us. I recently read The Rational Mail. What is your opinion on plate spinning? What Rolo Tomasi says makes sense to me by meeting multiple women and letting the women covertly know about his non-exclusiveness. He makes himself the price and will less likely develop one-itis for a woman. And competition anxiety is also a very good tool in my opinion. Rolo says a man should be monogamous before the age of, uh, shouldn't be monogamous before the age of 30 to 32 and focus on himself, which also makes a lot of sense to me. On the other hand, you talk about courting for marriage instead of dating and not being promiscuous as a man, which also makes a lot of sense to me. Where do I draw the line between traditional courting and plate theory? So I would have you know that traditional courting is plate theory. The differences between plate theory in traditional courting and plate theory as Rollo's describing it is where sex comes in. And from my perspective, and like I was saying earlier, not necessarily because I'm Christian, not necessarily because it says so in the Bible, but because from a practical standpoint, I've discovered that it's a better idea to remain chaste as a man. In fact, it's powerful to remain chaste as a man. That's why I keep using this term that I learned from uh, uh, my friend, one of my friends, I read his book, uh, The Way of Patriarchy. Oh boy, I'm getting this all wrong. The Case for Patriarchy by, t by Tim Gordon. He uses the term, I got this term from him and I think it's a beautiful term and it's a term that we have to really embody as men if we're gonna get our power back and that is weaponize chastity, weaponize chastity. The reason why I think weaponized chastity is so important for men to remain chaste, even though your plate's spinning, which like I said, is traditional courting. Traditional courting means you're spinning these plates. You're getting to know multiple women, but without the sex with weaponized chastity, because among many reasons, when you're having sex with a woman, you cannot see her clearly. You absolutely cannot see that woman for her wife worthiness if she's giving you good sex. That's a problem. Good, let me put this th this way. Good sex is a big problem because you'll end up falling for the woman that gives you the best feelings. And of course, we know in this world that feelings reign supreme and that's why nothing works. You cannot see a person, much less a woman, clearly if you have emotional entanglement with them. This is across the board with all people, so I'll bring it down to this, this I'll use this example. If you're dealing with another guy, but you have anger towards him for some reason, you can't see that guy for who he really is because you're all hung up in the emotion that colors your, your experience of him, right? You're not seeing that guy clearly. You and two, another guy could be talking to the same person and hearing totally different things because your experience or your filter is through anger, or it could be through awe, right? A lot of times, you, we can, if we are around somebody that we respect, right? I see this with a lot of guys that meet me when I do grounding camps and stuff like that. And we have a tendency to do this with men and women. I get put on a pedestal, and what happens when I get put on, and I watch it, I notice it, and I warn people against it. I say, wait a second, don't see me through your Elliot goggles right now. See me through as a man, as, a, as, a, as your equal in many ways, and be discerning about the things that I'm saying. I don't want you to take what I say for granted because I'm your Elliot, right? Starstruck when you see me. Doesn't mean I can't be wrong. Those are goggles. Anger, awe, any emotion are goggles. They're filters. You can't discern that per person properly. When you have sex with a woman, understand that sex is emotional. Whether you see it that way or not, it is movement, energy moving in the body. Not only is it energy moving in the body, which is what emotion means. Emotion, There's, that's why you call it feelings, right? You don't have, fe feelings aren't up here. Feelings are in your body. That's why emotions and feelings, they're, they're, you feel them. When you have sex with a woman, you're feeling her. She is, she seeps into your emotional body. And as a result, you can't see her clearly the same way that you can't see somebody you have anger with. They're, they've in, when you have anger with somebody or you have an emotion to, to somebody, you have an entanglement with that person. An unresourceful entanglement for the most part. For the most part, any emotional entanglement we have somebody, with somebody is 
unresourceful because it's not true. It's not logical. So here you are, plate spinning these women. But not all, but, and here's the thing. I am of the opinion that it makes no sense to deal with a woman unless you're planning on creating a life with her. Because otherwise, what's the point? So you can get your rocks off? That's cheap. That is not worthy of the dignity of man to be getting entangled with these women so that you can blow your load. To me, that, that, does, that not only doesn't produce true pride, right? There's nothing to be proud about. But it also produces a false pride, a false sense of pride. Like there's some sort of accomplishment because you got this girl to spread her legs and blow your load. Unless you're a narcissistic psychopath, there's no, there's no pride in that. There's, hey, I manipulated you or either that, either I manipulated you or you're so loose that all I had to do was blow on you and whew, whew, she fell back. You call women like that, they say they have round heels. Imagine that, a woman with round heels. What does that mean? All you got to do is tap her, boom, and she falls on her back. There's no pride in boning a woman with round heels. There's no pride in using game, narcissistic, psychopathic techniques to mystify her into sex. What's the value there? You know what's valuable in life? Family marriage, children, grandchildren, legacy. That's, that's noble for a man. Plate spinning or, bas or basically dick dipping is ignoble. Animals do that. Beasts of the field do that. There's no pride in that. You do what a dog does. You know what a dog doesn't have? Marriage, family, grandchildren. Legacy. No other animals have that. So there's no pride in doing that. Rant over. When you are dealing with a woman, when you're dealing, with, imagine you're dealing with multiple women now, and you're dicking, you're dipping your dick in all these different women, and you're vetting them for what? For wife worthiness. I spoke about this last week. Very important. You're not looking for a woman that can become a wife. You're looking for a wife that you can make yours. Let that sink in. And that's why, and I'm, I'm doing this, I'm creating this. I'm going to create a course very soon here about courting. There are specific objectives that need to be met with regard to a woman to see if she is wife worthy. Women have an innate ability to shit test men. It's one of the graces God gives them because they're more lowly. And when I say lowly, I don't mean less noble. Lowly meaning more grounded. They're, they're a little bit more closer to the earth, right? They work, their power is down here. Our power is up here, head and arms. Their power, if you notice, that's where, the, right? that's where their power is, right? It's from the belly button down, right? So they're down here. God gives a lot of instinct. That's a lot of instinct. It gives them a lot of instinct. Men, we, that's why men need initiation because they, we need other men to smack us and tell us what's going on. We need brute strength and logic. That's how men work. Men need to be taught and men need a code to live by. A part of the code needs to be what to look for in a woman that's worth making your wife. That's not arbitrary. This whole Disney bullshit where they say that love is in the eye of the beholder or that you, know, you can't control love or that love is beyond all logic. That's retarded. That's why relationships don't work. Because we fell for that garbage. And, and the easiest way to fall for that garbage is to be emotionally entangled with somebody. You got to keep women at a distance so that, look, I love the idea. You agree, Rolo says it, and I agree. Focus on yourself. This is, write this down or think this through. How can you focus on yourself as a man, right? Building up your value. That's what focusing yourself means. It means build your frame, right? That means have your foundation built. Get your career going. Get your education going. Get your money going. Get your spiritual life in order. Get your psychological life in order. Get your sh shit right first. And then bring a woman in. 
But check this out. You know how many times I've seen this? I've seen this. I've seen this a lot. A man spends, he does that. A man spends time getting his ish in order. You know who, who this is? Elon Musk. Check out Elon Musk. A lot of the guys in the red pill community, they, they, they clown on him. They clown him. And there's others too. I won't say their names. Check out Elon Musk. That guy is a G. Somebody got their stuff in order is Elon Musk. He's brilliant. He's rich. He's ambitious. But he fails when it comes to vetting women. There's a lot of millionaires out there. They get their stuff, to, they get their life together. They work on themselves, but they lose it all because of women. I just put up a post on Instagram the other day. I put it in my stories where it showed like the four richest men in the, in the world and how they got their money, right? The business that they created. And then the four most wealthy women in the world. You know how they got their money? From the men. Divorce. That's how they got it. How are these men so brilliant, but yet fail where it matters the most? Jeff Bezos' wife just took him to the bank for like $10 billion or something like that. Ridiculous. Why? Why? For the very thing that I'm talking about right now. Not vetting women without the emotional, without the emotional goggles on, filter on. So check you out. Check this out. Let's say you spend 30 years, right? You get into your 30s. You're like, man, I've been focusing on myself. I've been dealing with my business. I'm getting my shit right. Then you start dipping your dick. Now, you can't see clearly which one of these women are not going to rob you. If you spend your, your 20s and early 30s building up your frame, you owe it to yourself to be as logical about choosing a woman as you were about building your business. You cannot be logical if you're dipping your dick because you got emotional hang-ups. I'm just speaking about what's practical. I'm just speaking about what would work best. I understand that the dating market's very different and I'm asking you guys to consider something that is very contrary to the way the world works right now. I understand that, but I can't sit here and in good conscience give you any other advice. I absolutely cannot because if I give you advice like Rolo, it's just going to keep rolling down the damn shithole that it is. Boy, I'm cursing a lot today. And even if, I know I sound like a broken record, but even if you're an alpha type male, you were ambitious and you did what you had to do, you start dipping your dick after you can lose everything that you had. Why? Because you brought the wrong woman in because you weren't looking for a wife. You were looking for a good time. Who's going to give me the best feelings? Who's going to rock my world? You're acting like a woman when you behave that way as men, too. I want you to understand that. That's how women choose. Women choose based on feeling. Do you get that? That's why important, it's important for men to give feelings to a woman. And it's okay for a woman to be that way. It's her nature to be that way. But as a man, you choosing based on the woman that gives you the best feelings that makes you feel most proud, that rubs your rod the right, right way, she gives good whatever, that is, that is beyond effeminate. That is backwards when it comes to regard to men. So let's go back to your question. What is my opinion on plate spinning? Great idea, awesome idea. In fact, that's what courting is. It's plate spinning. Do not, do not entangle yourself. Do not commit yourself to any of these women because they could put on a nice face for a little while. The problem is, you, ever, you know that song by Shaka Damus? I, used to, I listen to reggae. Pretty face on bad character. Then I'm kind of girl. Can't fool Shaka. That's what he said. Pretty face on bad character. Then I'm type of girl. Can't fool Shaka. Something like that. Pretty face, pretty face, bad character. You're not going to fool me. These women put on a pretty face, and you're looking at that pretty face, and she's giving you a good time. You are cold, you totally fooled. You're totally fooled now. 
Now you think that you're going to marry her and she's going to keep giving you that good stuff, but little you know, she's lazy, she's nasty, she's disrespectful. I mean, now you got basically worse. You're better off just getting yourself a sex doll. At least she don't talk back, right? And you don't expect her to do anything beyond just lay there and make noise, right? But a wife, you must have expectations for. Any partnership you go into, you have expectations for that partner. I have a business partner. He has expectations for me and I have expectations for him. If I don't hold up my expectation and we go into it with a contract and we don't each, one of us don't hold up our end of the deal, it's like, whoa, hold on. This is a breach of contract. You must have expectations for what that woman will do for your life in the long run, especially if you're waiting until you're 30. Because now, you now you have something to lose. When you're 20, when you're like me, I had nothing to lose. I had nothing to lose. I was beyond broke. I was $100,000 in debt. I, I built my life with my wife. That's one way to do it too. I like that. But again, I don't expect you guys. I, I understand. I'm not f a fool. I understand what you're dealing with out there. Good way to go about it is once you're 30, you start looking for a girl that's in her early 20s. I mean, what's legal age? I will start looking right above the legal age. Why not? 19, right? That way, even if she is, I can't, of course, you can't expect these women to be virgins. I understand. You should demand virginity and you should demand as much purity as possible, but you can't, you're not going to find that out. They're not going to tell you. But what you do know is for every year that goes by, three to five cocks have been inside her, right? So you want to, you want to, when you're 30, you want to look for an 18-year-old, right? As soon as she becomes legal. That's so funny. That's what my dad did. <laughs> my mom was 18. I think they got married. She was like 19 or something. My dad was like 25, 26. That's what you want to do. What's your opinion on plate spinning? Good idea. Meeting multiple women, great idea. Covertly letting them know about non-exclusiveness, amazing. Amazing advice. Makes himself the prize, that's right. You're right, non-exclusiveness and competition anxiety is amazing. In fact, you should all, even when you marry your woman, she should even then still have a little competition anxiety, right? My wife, look, my wife knows that she and I are one flesh, nothing's ever going to happen. But she also knows there's a lot of women out there that would love to steal me away. Why? Because I keep myself up. I stay healthy. I stay strong. I stay in my frame, right? So you want to do that. You always want to have, you, to get great behavior out of a woman, and I'm not saying all women, I don't even think my wife really needs this, but it's there and it's good. They should have competition anxiety. And I've even heard, I don't agree with this, but I even heard guys say that's why polygamy and having multiple wives is a good idea. Because if any one of them feels like they're going to get out of order, they realize real quick, oh, but he's, he has her, so I better be good because he has options. I see the value in that. Now, let's back up for a minute, minute and, and because we're talking about courting. Courting in this way makes a lot of sense. She should know. She should know that I'm not committed to you. And you should know she's not committed to you either. That's the beautiful thing about courting. But it, it's ugly when sex gets involved. It becomes very ugly when sex becomes involved. Because not only now is there competition anxiety, but on the side of the man, because women and men think differently about sex. A woman has no problem if a man has had 100 partners. She just wants the top pick. A man who is in his frame, a man who's thinking with a masculine protect and provide instinct, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to invest in this and I want to make sure my investment is worthy, he don't want somebody that's been run through. Guys, if you've ever thought that or you have friends that think that, you, you got to clean that up. Promiscuous women are not a good investment. Where am I going with this? So... It's very good for her to know, okay, good, how sex makes it ugly. How's how makes it, sex makes it ugly for that very thing for a man? I know that I'm being chased. I'm weaponizing chastity 
right? We can do. We can make a whole rant on weaponizing chastity and the value thereof if we make it a movement. If men get on board with that, but most men are so effeminate that I understand it's like pushing a rock uphill. I preach this to you guys, and I'm sure maybe one out of a hundred will consider what I'm saying and actually practice it. Maybe more. I don't know. Surprise me. But you know that if these women who love attention are not going to get it from you, fine. I'm going to get some other man addicted. It's almost like a, like a drug dealer. A drug dealer don't care if you're buying his drugs. He just needs a customer. And that's where these women act. But if men weaponize chastity and become a brotherhood, this is how this women destroyed us because they turned us against each other. They turn us against each other, so now we see each other as competition. We shouldn't see each other as competition as men. We should see each other as a, as a playing field, as a, as, a, as a team out to do the best, get the best. But instead, it's who's sliding their snake up in this chick. I don't want any girl that's, that has, that's getting slid up on with somebody else's snake, right? So it makes it ugly. Weaponized chastity. We need to make it a movement. Hashtag weaponized chastity. Start thinking about that, men. So anyway, I'm not offering you a solution here. I'm offering you my thoughts on this, right? These are my thoughts on this. Plate spinning is a good idea. Non-exclusive enough, great idea. That's all courting. Competition anxiety, it's courting. Not having one-itis, you don't get one-itis when you don't bone. You can't get one-itis. He's right. The problem is that you guys, most men, aren't going to be able to plate spin without getting one-itis for one of them. You think that just because you got multiple girls that you're dipping your spoon into their pudding, that you're not going to get one-itis? Guarantee one of them is going to give you one-itis. You're going to be like, man, that's the one, right? And it's usually emotional, like I said, because of the sex. So there's no guarantee against not getting one-itis because you're boning multiple women. There absolutely is no guarantee because not even that, that's not even a man's nature. Man's nature is, is to have many, right? Because our lowest nature, our base nature. We got a lot of seeds. We want to blow our nuts, right? Women, women can only have one. They have one a month. Men, thousands. They have one, one egg a month. We have thousands a week, Right? So it's, it's the nature of men. Promiscuity is more of a nature for men than it's for women. Promiscuity is dangerous for women for multiple different reasons, but our culture has destroyed that. Through what? Contraception and abortion. You know what? If y'all want, want to fix this from the political standpoint, y'all really want to fix this. Let you, let's say you hear what Elliot's saying right now, and you're like, man, yeah, Elliot, I wish things would go back to where they could be or where they should be. Get involved and make contraception and abortion illegal. Those were the two biggest weapons of the feminists. If we could make abortion and contraception illegal, boy, family would be great again, marriage would be great again, children would be healthy again, the culture would be restored, America would be great again. Let's tell that to Donald Trump. Donald Trump wants to make America great again, and he's stopping abortion, and a lot of people are stopping abortion. I'm happy for that because that's the most diabolical form of contraception. Kill the baby. That's, but any, and, and you know what? One of the questions you got to ask a woman when you're vetting her, what does she think about abortion? Any woman that thinks it's okay to kill her own baby is done. She's done. She's, she's bought and sold by Satan. And it's very easy for women to be bought and sold by Satan. Very easy for them to become slaves to Satan. That's why the snake came to Eve. Just got to remind you. That's why it's men's job to protect them. You know how we protect them? No more abortion. No more killing your baby. No more birth control. But anyway, I'm daydreaming, right? I'm just making stuff up, right? But you can get involved. You can do something like that. Let me come full circle with you. He says, on the other hand, you talk about marriage instead of dating and not being a promiscuous as a man. Promiscuity is effeminacy in a man because it means he has no self-control, right? Just because you want that donut don't mean you should eat it. He says that makes a lot of sense. So where should we draw the line between courting and plate theory? Well, I think I gave you enough on that. Courting is 
synonymous with plate theory. It's the sex, fellas. It's the sex. That's, that's the trap. That's the stumbling block. That is what trips us up. It's sex and, as a result, emotional entanglement. If you can remain distant and rational with women, right? Rolo calls it rational male, but Rolo is wrong in his, in his way of teaching rational male. It's not rational for a man to become emotionally entangled with a woman. And if you, can, if you could avoid that completely, if you're boning a lot of women and you don't become emotionally entangled with one of them, you don't feel deeply connected with one of them, then maybe you have, maybe you have bigger issues, right? That's called schizoid. A schizoid is someone whose thoughts and values, their mind, is completely severed from their body. That's what schism means, separate. And your body's just a tool. You remember that movie, uh, American Psycho? You ever see that movie, American Psycho? He's looking in the mirror and he's, he's pounding that girl. That's legitimately a psychopathic behavior. Anyway, I can go on and on, but I'm going to stop. Ben Weiss says, Isaac Newton said his greatest achievement was celibacy. <laughs> Let's bring that back. I believe that's true. I believe, think about the value of a man who builds himself up and retains his seed for life. Pfft. Not spilling it all over the place, blowing your load, especially with unworthy women. Done. Yo, are you ready to become a king in your life? If so, I'm looking for a few more guys that I can work closely with in order to help them dominate in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, then just go over to my Instagram account and DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. My team will get back to you with the details. If you're able to message me today, I can guarantee you that you'll be able to work closely with me. So DM me the word King on my Instagram and I'll get back to you with the details right away.